Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to the second shelf and to the last um, review video, the Women's Prize for Fiction long-listed books. I don't know whether this was a whole sentence, but you know what I mean. So there, there are five, no, no, not four, there are five books that I haven't reviewed specifically in a video for the Women's Prize, and I just want to do that real quick, at least quick in my book, you know. Um, and then I'm going to tell you my ranking because next week, Wednesday, um, the shortlist will be announced. And I'm hoping to film also a reaction video on the shortlist then because I'm not good at predicting, first of all. So I'm not going to do a prediction. I'm just going to tell you which six books I feel should be on the shortlist. And given my record, I would be very, very happy if I had half. So if half of the books that I want to see on the shortlist are actually on the shortlist, then I'm happy. But the uh, reviews first. Let me just check which book uh, I wrote down first. In the, Oh yes, and I also listed below the other three review videos uh, and also my long list reaction video. So if you want to check that out in the review videos uh, in the description box, I also uh, wrote down which books I review in each video, video so that you don't have to, uh, you know, search. Um, so anyway, the first book uh, that uh, is left for me to talk in a specific, in a, in, a, in a separate video, Women's Prize video, is Remote Sympathy by Catherine Chiche. Uh, Catherine Chiche is one of the two New Zealand authors um, whose book is longlisted for the Women's Prize. And I reviewed this book uh, in my March Tops and Flops. I will leave a link to that video down below and also with a timestamp. So if you want to have an extensive review, you will find it there. I just want to say here, this book didn't work for me at all. It irked me quite a bit. It is a Holocaust book, a Holocaust tale set in the Second World War, 1943. And we follow um, a couple, a German couple. Um, uh, the, the husband, Dietrich, is uh, an SS officer sent to Buchenwald um, to work there. And he takes along with him his wife, Greta, and their son. And the other half of the story is uh, a Jewish doctor, Leonard uh, Weber, who um, has devised, uh, who, who has invented something um, that might be able to cure cancer. And the two stories, of course, converge. I'm not going to spoil anything, but my main issue with this was that if you tackle um, a topic as heavy as the Holocaust, and especially the role of um, the people. You have this chorus of Weimar people because Buchenwald was close to the city of Weimar. Um, and uh, this idea of people not knowing what hap what is going on in the concentration camp or not wanting to know, and the, uh, the SS officer um, not willing to see that is that there's anything wrong with what what he's doing, and the Jewish uh, doctor caught in the middle and trying to save his life. That is all. I, I'm hesitant to say to use the word cliche when it comes to a Holocaust tale, but it was that. So, in my opinion, this was a superfluous book because it didn't add anything new to the conversation. And like I said, in my view, if you have a topic as heavy as that, uh, then you should be able to add something new because the literature about the Holocaust is also in novels is huge and they are fantastic books to be found. So in 2021, the book was published in 2021 to write a new one, you really have to say, have to say something. And I felt that the author didn't have to say anything. I'm in a minority here. A lot of people, if I look at the Goodreads uh, groups, they love this book. Um, so, but I thought, no, not good. Um, the next one that I uh, had that was left for me to review was The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. Elif Shafak is a Turkish 
author. She identifies as Turkish, but she writes in English. She lived in the US, and I think now she lives in the UK or the other way around. And I love her. Uh, when I see interviews, when I see talks, I think she's intelligent. She, she has something to say. And I never get along with her novels, ever. And this was no different. The Island of Missing Trees is about, it opens um, with um, a young girl, uh, a child still, Ada, and her father, Kostas. Uh, Kostas is uh, um, a Greek, um, a man Greek of, from Cyprus, and they live in London. And then we learn about the family history, that the wife was deceased, and we learn why. Um, she was a Turkish uh, a Cypriot, and they, Kostas and Daphne, and they met and they fell in love, and s plot ensues from there. I just didn't get along with the structure of the book. Um, the the flashbacks didn't work for me. I loved Costas as a character. I also loved Ada or Ada. But one of the main um, devices, so to speak, of the author with this book was a fig tree. Um, that was a tree that Costas, he's into trees. He's a researcher, uh, a scholar about trees. But he's also a gardener. Um, and he took this tree from Cyprus to London. And the tree plays a vital role. That would have been okay, but the tree is uh, one of the uh, narrators. It's a female fig tree, um, and she narrates big portions of the story as a sort of chorus or commentary. That didn't work for me at all. I didn't see why this was necessary. It, it felt gimmicky. To me, I really enjoyed the background uh, of the, this family history, but there was a lot of stuff that I felt was um, the, the author obviously needed it um, in order to propel her story forward, but it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. But my main uh, gripe with the book was definitely uh, the fig tree and the role this tree narrator. I just don't do well with tree na narrators, and certainly not in this way when it's not about the tree as such, but the she, the tree, gives commentary on the life of Costas and Ada and Daphne and what happened and the family history. And I felt the way that the author made this work not for me, but, you know, is that the tree would get information from other animals or birds or, yeah, no, 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 no. The, the, unfortunately, again, Elif Shafak turns out that I love her when she just give, when she gives talks and interviews and, and stuff, but her books just never really work for me. Um, the next one is Creatures of Passage by Morova uh, Yejide, uh, a black American author. And um, this book I already talked about in my very first review video because I had started it and then somehow I forgot to actually wrap up the review once I finished it. So it, it was one of the first books that I started and I loved it. I thought it was brilliant, even though none of it, if you had told me, just, you know, wrote on a piece of paper what the book is about, I would have said, this is not a book for me. So the book is set in the 1970s um, in uh, in the, the, the United States, in Anacostia, and you have this taxi driver's Neftis, and yes, that is a name from um, Egyptian mythology, who drives a special kind of cab. In her boot, you have um, a, a ghost. It's only referred to as the dead white woman. And she drives people around to certain destinations. So it's magical what she does in a way. I mean, she doesn't have magic in terms of... Um, and then there are family members who do have some sort of magic. One uh, a woman in particular, she has the gift of foresight. She has dreams that tell you something about the future, even though the dreams are not given uh, straight facts, but have to be interpreted. Um, there is also a twin. Uh, Neftis is one part of a twin. Um, her brother Osiris, who 
is obviously uh, dead and the way he died and his wife um, and the the family, the, the Dash, the nephew of Neftis, uh, they all play a role in this very um, well-constructed, magical kind of world. But the, the story is mostly also about the the lives of the other people that are in the yeah in the social context of neftis and there is quite some horrible stuff uh, had happened in the past with with child abuse and that collides with neftis family especially with her young nephew dash and how this is all resolved um is yeah that that's the book i thought it was brilliantly written it was magical it was lyrical in 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 uh, writing and it just captured me and like i'm not a fantasy reader as you know i don't like the magic stuff in what we call magical realism but this book was just very different and inventive and distinctive in in the storytelling and i listened to it on audio and the author reads it and that's not always a success but this in this particular instance it only enhanced the experience so i thought it was fantastic um then we have um uh let me just see here great circle by maggie shipstead Th that book was also um long listed or even shortlisted i think for the booker prize last year um didn't work for me either it's a historical fiction partly uh there are two timelines one um focuses on marianne um decades in the past and she wants to be an aviator she wants to fly and we learn about her life story and what happens to her and whether how she got to fly and you know her life and in present day we have hadley a hollywood actress quite famous and rich who for various reasons scandals happen um uh, she needs to refocus and she is to play uh, marian in a new film about this aviator both characters are fictitious so it's not real life it just didn't interest me uh the hollywood stuff it was boring to me i'm not interested in that whole hollywood actor kind of thing uh, maggie shipstead has personal knowledge about this world so if you're interested in that that might work for you i was just bored and the the aviator part yeah there were also the, the back stories that i felt were completely unnecessary didn't inform the story in any way especially um the background of one woman um who you know was part of the family I felt yeah yeah so it it was just a, a book that it was a fast read and it was not bad it was well told but it didn't do anything for me so it yeah um and the last book that I read uh was a cre oh, not creatures of passage I already talked about that salt lake by lulu uh ellison lulu ellison is um a visual artist mainly um but she this is her second novel and this novel was crowdfunded which i find really fascinating and good for you that you got a novel published by crowdfunding and i really really liked it i read this with heidi from my reading life i haven't watched whether she had reviewed it yet because i didn't want to um uh you know i will I think she probably reviewed it. It doesn't really matter whether she has already reviewed it. Uh, but she liked it as well. But I definitely liked it more. Uh, it's a dystopian tale also with two timelines. You know, the two timeline thing. I'm not going <laughs> to bitch about it uh, anymore. But this in this, it made sense uh, for me because there is a reason why these timelines I told are told separately and how they in the end converge. So it's all set in the future and the premise I felt was really interesting. Um, it was that due to all kinds of natural catastrophe and a pandemic, um, the uh, people went from rural areas to the city and a few people held out 
uh, in rural areas um, and kept their farm. And one of the persons telling one storyline is Jesse. When the book opens, the just about teenage son of a couple who still lives in a rural area. So it's his uh, tale, uh, what happens to them, whether, you know, it's from the beginning clear that they may have to make a decision whether or not to move to the city, what happens to the farm. So his life is one storyline, and I thought that one was excellent. Uh, the other storyline is a woman who lives in the city, Isolde, and we learn early on when they do those storylines uh, switch that Isolde's storyline is starting way decades after uh, Jesse, when Jesse is a teenager. Um, and she has uh, survived a, a terrorist attack uh, in which her mother was killed. Um, and then she visits. Uh, the perpetrator who is convicted in jail that is part of the justice system then. I'm not going to say any more about the plot. Um, Heidi rightfully uh, said as a criticism, the dystopian part is not the main part. So the world is explored and how it works, but not as a really a main issue of world building. It's much more about how we live our lives and how much are we able to uh, live our lives without other people um, controlling it. So the, the person in prison, the, pre the perpetrator of this terrorist attack, um, his life is completely controlled by other people and external forces. Uh, Jesse's life to a certain extent, because external forces are also a big part of why the rural areas don't work anymore. So that theme is something that I that really resonated with me. Uh, and what does making choices mean? How 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 much are you able to make choices? So I I really really like this book. And then for uh, the ranking that you are all waiting for. And in order not to make any mistakes, I will leave the ranking of all 16 books also down below. But my first six are Creatures of Passage. Without any doubt, I thought it was the best book of the shortlist. Uh, then uh, The Bread, The Devil, Need. Um, I reviewed this, I think, in the second, uh, no, in the first video even, that was the the story uh, set in uh, uh, in the Carib Caribbean with this woman sounded strong but has an abusive relationship and I felt the voice was so strong and the Trinidadian Creole was fantastic really worked well in this book so that is my on second place and then not surprisingly Salt Lake which I just talked about uh, number three. Uh, then the sort of fantasy book that I really loved, even though, like I just uh, 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 repeated, I don't like fantasy, was uh, One Sky Day, which is uh, in the US published under the name of Poppy Show. And Poppy Show is the island that the story is set. And it is an island like we know, but everybody on this island has a little, as the author calls it, a little something-something. So some magical uh, ability. And there are two main characters, a man and a woman, um, and how their stories uh, evolve and what we learn about the island. I thought it was just really, really, uh, a really engaging, well-told story. So that's my number four. Uh, number five is The Sentence. Um, by Louisa Edrick, set in a bookstore, also with a ghost. Ghost is a, a theme this year, ghost and choruses, because I forgot to mention in Salt Lake you have a chorus of cows. I didn't like that. That was one of the reasons why it didn't make it uh, to a number one ranking, for instance. Anyway, so in this, uh, the sentence is set in a bookstore, and you have an ex- a convict rookie who just um, left jail and she started to work for this bookstore and then one of the um, regular customers dies and haunt, haunts the bookstore. 
It didn't work for me, the very, very contemporary setting. So it talks about the pandemic. It talks about um, uh, 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 George Floyd's death. Th that never really works for me if it's so fresh in my mind. But it was still a good book. Uh, so number five. And number six was Build Your House Around My Body, which didn't really work for me. Um, set in uh, uh, it's a Vietnamese story central character is a Vietnamese woman from the US and a Vietnamese young wo woman way in the past and the book jumps back and forth uh, both women turn out missing and then there are a lot of magical creatures it, the, the, the structure didn't work for me but I could see that it was still a good book that's why I ranked it uh, number 6 so those are my, the books that I, if I had to judge them and I had to decide, uh, those are the six that I would put uh, on the shortlist. And like I said, the ranking of the other 10 uh, you can find down below. So this is almost it for the Women's Prize. Next Wednesday, uh, when the shortlist is announced, I will hopefully be able to find, film uh, right away a reaction video. But so far, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed uh, these reviews and my ranking. I'm looking forward to your comments as always, and I'll see you all soon in the next one.